Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. My name is Pastor Evelyn Craighead, and I would like to welcome you to the Feeding House Ministries, a teaching ministry that focuses on your soul and your eternal destiny, a ministry that uncompromisingly teaches the truth of God's word. And our scripture teaching this morning comes from Psalm 100, and I will be reading verses 1 through 5 from the New King James Version. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. My subject for this morning is acknowledge and receive the Lord. When we acknowledge someone, we're admitting that the person is true, that we recognize the authority and claims of that person, mm -hmm. and that we accept, confess, and receive that person. We simply acknowledge that person for who they are, mm -hmm. and so it is with the Lord. Amen. And every Sunday morning, a beautiful thing happens all around the world. Millions and millions of people gather in churches to worship and praise the Lord. And to worship the Lord means to adore, obey, and reverence Him. We focus positive attention on Him. We enjoy the presence of the Lord and worship in any action or attitude expresses that praise, mm -hmm. love, and appreciation for the Lord. But worship can also be expressed through obedience in how we treat other people. Yes. On the other hand, praise is expressing honor and gratitude to the Lord through worship, words, attitudes, and actions. And so again, people from all around the world, millions and millions of people gather in churches to worship and praise the Lord, whether it be in structures, great or small, magnificent or simple, extravagant or beautifully plain, out in the open or in secret, people from all walks of life gather in God's holy name. Amen. On the other hand, there are millions and millions of people who don't follow this pattern. Millions of people who worship false gods or no God at all mm -hmm. because their eyes are blinded to the truth. Yes. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse four, Four says, whose minds the little g gods of this age has blinded and the little g god is Satan, who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Millions of people can't see or they don't want to see mm -hmm. that the Lord is their creator and God. Yes. And Psalm 100 is the last in a series of Psalms that emphasizes the Lord as king. It describes God's people going into his house to worship him. And it spells out what I, our attitude should be as we go. Mm -hmm. It also calls out to all the people of the earth, urging them to recognize that the Lord is God and he's inviting them to receive him. Mm -hmm. In a very practical sense, this psalm teaches us the actual purpose of the church to joyfully express praise and thanksgiving to God, to present ourselves for God's service, and to urge all people of the earth to come into a relationship with God, an intimate and personal relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And this is a summons to all the earth mm -hmm. to acknowledge and receive the Lord. Verses 1 through 2 says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Acknowledge the Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah. Praise him alone. Amen. 
Psalm 100 begins with the summons to all the lands to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, to shout loudly and exuberantly, to shout energetically and to shout enthusiastically to the Lord, mm -hmm. to come before his presence with singing. And this call is described as the blowing of the trumpets for the earth's population to come together to worship the Lord. It's an exhortation, an appeal, an urging to the Gentile nations, the non-Jewish nations to turn from their false gods mm -hmm. and acknowledge that the Lord, the God of Israel, is the only living and true God. Mm -hmm. It's an exhortation that all the people of all the land should praise the Lord and Him alone. Mm -hmm. We're to acknowledge the Lord. We're to serve Him with a glad heart, mm -hmm. worshiping and praising and serving Him and him alone. And a vital part of worship is presenting ourselves to the Lord for his service. Mm -hmm. And to serve means to work for, to do labor for someone. It means to be a servant, to worship. Think about Jesus. Even though Jesus Christ is God, he chose to serve mankind by laying down his life for us. Yes. And the New Testament instructs us to offer ourselves as living sacrifices to him. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says, I beseech you, I beg you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice and the only way you can be a living sacrifice is to be born again with God's Holy Spirit living in you, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Worship leads to service and true service is worship. But we should never serve the Lord out of duty or obligation, mm -hmm. but out of the gladness of our hearts. Amen. Because of God's great love and, and mercies, we should serve him not only willingly, but with great joy. But we should also remember what a tremendous privilege it is to be the servants of such a great king. And remember this as well. Being able to serve the king of kings mm -hmm. speaks of having the highest relationship, mm -hmm. the highest achievement, yeah. and the highest position in life. Amen. When we serve the Lord, we're acknowledging and receiving him, and what a privilege and honor it is to serve the Lord. Amen. Also acknowledging and receiving the Lord is approaching him with joyful songs and approaching him with the right attitude. We should literally come before the Lord's presence, before his face with songs of joy on our lips. And this command is directed at our demeanor or our attitude when we come to God's house for worship. Mm -hmm. I've seen some people come into the house of the Lord and their demeanor or attitude mm -hmm. was so awful, mm -hmm. I wonder why they came. Mm -hmm. Or why some would even <coughs> consider coming into God's presence with such an attitude. After all, it's God, our Lord and Savior, that we are to be acknowledging and receiving. Amen. And we are to approach him, approach him reverently, but also with joyful hearts and joyful songs. Yes. In the Old Testament, the Lord's presence was centered in the temple, but now both the church and our bodies are designated as the house of God. Amen. As believers, since our bodies are the temple of God's Holy Spirit, as we walk throughout each day, we should worship the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20 says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. Every week, we should acknowledge the Lord by gathering with his people for worship. Just as the psalmist extended the call to worship here, so churches across the world should extend the call to come and worship the Lord with them. Mm -hmm. But sadly, many professing believers don't answer this call. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Many people simply disobey God's command to assemble with other believers. Others go to church, but they do it grudgingly or half-heartedly, or they do it out of duty or obligation. 
But our attitude about going to church should be one of anticipation and joy. As a matter of fact, we should never say, I have to go to church. <laughs> to the contrary, serving the Lord and going to his house is a high privilege and it ought to be among the greatest joys in our lives. Psalm 122 verse 1 says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. If we're true, genuine believers, we should serve the Lord cheerfully, worshiping him wholeheartedly. And if you think about it, anything less is unworthy of God and his great love for us. Yeah. Verse 3 says, know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. As believers, in our acknowledging the Lord, we are to receive the Lord. We are to confess and know that he's the only true and living God. Amen. And we're admonished, we're warned to receive the Lord. And we are to know that he's our God. We are to know that he made us and that we didn't make ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are to know that we are his people and that we are the sheep of his pasture. Yeah. We are to know that he's good, that his mercy endures forever and that his truth is eternal. And this psalm invites all the people of the earth to receive the Lord. And the Lord Yahweh, Jehovah, is the name by which God has revealed himself to his people. Amen. It's the name by which he swore when he made his covenant with us. And his name guarantees that he will keep his promises at all costs. We are to know that the Lord is God and to know means that we are to know him personally and intimately and by experience and that the Lord is God and we're all invited to come into a personal and intimate relationship with God to experience God and to see for ourselves that he keeps his covenant, his promises. The Lord is good. Yeah. He's the only true and living God. And on the basis of creation, he's our creator. Mm -hmm. He made us. Therefore, we're his. Yeah. He formed our bodies and our souls. Psalm 139 verses 14 through 16 says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought, made in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. God crafted our spirits, mm -hmm. and he blew his breath into us, which yeah. is the only source of life. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. We live, breathe, and have our existence because of God. Yes. Acts chapter 17 verse 28 says, For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. We are not self-made. We are made by God who personally and individually created us for fellowship with him and to enjoy the fullness of the glory of his presence forever and ever. God is our rightful mm -hmm. owner. Therefore, he has an incontestable right to us in all things. We're his to be used by his power, mm -hmm. disposed of by his will, mm -hmm. and to be devoted to his honor and glory. He's our shepherd, yeah. and he guides and cares for us as his sheep. And God appeals to us on the basis of his guidance and care for us. Because as believers, he's our shepherd and we're his sheep. Amen. Psalm 95, 7 says, For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice. Amen. God's pasture is the earth which he so wisely created to provide for us and to meet all our needs. The Lord is a shepherd who deeply loves us and cares for his sheep and he loves us so much that he was willing to sacrifice his one and only son to lay down his life for us. 
John chapter 10 verses 11 and 15 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. As the father knows me, even so I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Through his creation, his word, and the circumstances of our lives, God seeks to guide us into a relationship with mm. him. And yet, many people don't even know that the Lord is God. Mm. Like sheep, they have gone astray and are wandering far away from him. But as believers, it's our responsibility to invite them to come into a relationship with God because we know God. We know that the Lord is God. We know that he created us for a relationship with him. We know that he gave his son for us and that by repenting and believing in him, we can be one of his sheep. And as believers, Christ has commissioned us to point the world to him, showing people that he's the only way into the Lord's fold. John chapter 10 verses 7 through 11 says, Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. God wants every individual on the face of this earth to know him and to come into a relationship with him. Yeah. And as believers, God has commissioned us. We're responsible. We've been appointed to take the gospel to all the earth. Amen. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, that's local, and in all Judea, that's state, and Samaria, that's national, and to the end of the earth, that's international. Amen. As believers, no matter where we are, local, state, national, or international, we're to be witnesses for Christ. We're to tell the world about his goodness. Yeah. We're to know that the Lord is God, that it is the Lord who has made us and not we ourselves, and that we're his people and the sheep of his pasture. Amen. Verses 4 through 5 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving mm -hmm. and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Enter the Lord's presence, his temple with a thankful heart. Amen. Worship the Lord at the temple, the place where his presence resides in a very special way. As we enter through the gates into the courts or courtyard of the temple, we're to offer thanksgiving and praise to our Lord. Mm -hmm. And the message is clear. God wants us to come into his presence with thankful hearts. Yes. And gratitude to him is at the heart of worship because he's worthy of praise. Amen. As our creator and shepherd, the Lord is worthy of praise. He made us mm -hmm. and he guides and cares for us throughout our lives. But more than that, he's our savior. Amen. When we, the most special objects of his creation, stray from him by sinning, he made a way for us to come back to him. He provided for our salvation by offering his son, Jesus Christ, as the sacrifice for our sin. Without question, God's power in creating us and in his faithfulness in caring for us merits our unending praise. But his love for us as demonstrated at Calvary exceeds every other reason for offering our thanks and praise to him. Mm -hmm. Because he's good and loving, his love never 
fails. Amen. That's why we should enter God's presence with thankful hearts because he's good and loving and every day the Lord displays his goodness to us. He's even good to those who don't know him, but he's especially he especially delights in giving good gifts to his children. Matthew chapter 7 verse 11 says, If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Every good thing in our lives is a gift from God. Amen. And we should enter God's presence with thankful hearts because he's good and loving. And we should give thanks to God for his mercy and unfailing covenant love because God's love for us never fails. It's everlasting. It's eternal. We may fail God, mm -hmm. but God never fails us Hallelujah. and nothing can overcome his love for us mm -hmm. because he's faithful and true to every generation. Finally, we should enter God's presence with thanksgiving for his truth and faithfulness. And the Lord is faithful and true to every generation. And we can count on God. Mm -hmm. We can count on his truth because he and his word can be trusted. From generation to generation, he's always the same. Hebrews 13, 3 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This Psalm, Psalm 100, teaches us what our attitude should be like when we go to God's house. Mm -hmm. Not only should we come before the Lord with gladness and joy, but we should enter his presence with thanksgiving and praise. Yes. God is good to us every day. Yes. He's always faithful to us mm -hmm. and his love never fails. As we walk or ride to church, we should prepare our hearts to give thanks to the Lord by reflecting on all that he has done for us in the past week and every week of the year. As we walk through the doors of his house, mm -hmm. our hearts should be filled with praise. When we enter the sanctuary and the service begins, we should lift our voices and wholeheartedly sing the praises of our good, loving, and faithful God. Yeah. As believers, as God's people, we are to express our gratitude to God by offering a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. Let us sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his word with joy, rejoicing. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 11 says, The voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of those who will say, Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endures forever, and of those who will bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Acknowledge and receive the Lord, because God will always be the creator and sustainer of the universe and our intimately loving Father, and he will always deserve our genuine joy filled gratitude and praise. Happy Thanksgiving and remember to praise the Lord and give him thanks. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Thank you, Lord, for this day, and thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.